Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space and Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hello, and welcome to the Cupola on Space Station. And welcome to one of my favorite things, which is story time from space. Today we're going to be reading the book, Ada Lace, Take Me to Your Leader, by Emily Calandrelli with Tamsin Weston, illustrated by Renee Carilla. Chapter 1, Radio Silence. Ada pressed the button on the mic and opened her mouth to speak. That was the exact moment when Miss Lace burned the toast. The smoke alarm on the stairs went off, and George the robot rolled around the room, crying, Fire! Fire! No! Ada yelled. George, there is no fire! Then the sprinkler in the center of Ada's bedroom ceiling rained down on her bed, her rug, and her desk. Ada threw her raincoat over the radio, but she wasn't sure she was quick enough. George, the fire's out, called Ada. Emergency averted, answered George. The fire alarm stopped beeping, the sprinkler stopped sprinkling. Elliot ran into Ada's room with his new Batman umbrella. I missed it again, he said. Ada, said Mr. Lace from the doorway. You may need to fine-tune George. Mom may need to fine-tune the toaster. Ada, said Mr. Lace. I know, Dad. I'll fix him. Ada had engineered her robot George to keep her room safe, but she'd already had to replace her rug after their neighbor Jacob grilled his steak in the courtyard and the smoke poured into Ada's room. Clearly, George was doing his job a little too well. Safety first, said George. It was as if he'd read her thoughts. That's creepy, George, said Ada. The nightlight on George's head lit up. This will comfort you, he said. Soothing music drifted out of his speakers. Thanks, George. I feel better now. You can go to sleep, said Ada. And he rolled to the corner and turned off. Ada pulled the raincoat off her ham radio and dried it off. Then Nina showed up. Ada looked at the clock and realized she was supposed to meet her friend five minutes ago to walk to school. Hey, you were late, so I thought I would just run over here. Whoa, is that a ham radio? Yes, Mr. Peebles gave it to me the other day. I'm still trying to figure it out. How did you know? I was just reading about them in my book, World of Weird Book 3, Across the Void. Have you contacted a parallel universe yet? I'm not sure I can even talk to Mr. Peebles now. George may have broken it. George used it? It's a long story. I can tell you on the way to school. As they walked, Ada told Nina about George's false alarm, and Nina told Ada about her book. In it, a group of kids used a ham radio in their clubhouse. First, they talked to people all over the world, then from other worlds. That sounds cool, said Ada. I wish I could do that with my radio. Maybe you can, said Nina. At this point, I'd be happy just to talk to someone in Oakland. After school, Ada invited Nina over to help her work on the radio. Nina had all kinds of advice. You know, in the book, Nate and Fiona wore tinfoil hats. Oh, really? Why? Gee, Ada, I thought you knew about this stuff. That way the evil energy from the other world couldn't, couldn't seep into their brains. I think I'll just start with trying to figure out how to talk to someone in the Bay Area first. Baby steps. Anyway, you need a different kind of radio to speak to other parts of the world, and probably other worlds, I guess. Why is it called a ham radio anyway, asked Nina. Ada's dad was passing Ada's room. He couldn't resist the chance to answer. Well, rumor has it that Marconi was a little hungry when he invented the radio, so the first thing he did when he got it working was order a ham sandwich. Dad, called Ada. Is that true, said Nina? Of course not, said Ada. Yeah, you're right. Marconi was Italian. He probably would have ordered capicola or prosciutto. Ugh, said Ada. Nina didn't seem to know whether to be amused or confused. No one really knows why it's called a ham, said Ada. Some people think it's an acronym for the three radio inventors, Hertz, Armstrong, and Marconi, but there are other explanations too. 
Ada took the cover off the radio and revealed a bunch of brightly colored wires and little nodes fixed into a green circuit board. Gosh, it's so pretty. The cover should be see-through, said Nina. That's a cool idea. Maybe I'll work on that after I figure out the talking part. There was very little moisture inside from the emergency, from the fire emergency. Still, Ada patted the whole thing down with a towel just in case. Then she put the casing back on, flicked the switch, and pressed the button on the microphone. Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo. Anyone out there, over? Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo, looking for someone to talk to. Anyone? Mr. Peebles? What's Katie whatchamacallit? Is it a secret code? It's my call sign. I got it with my radio license. I have to use it whenever I talk on ham radio. It's like a special radio name. The radio answered with static. Ada grabbed an antenna she had saved from her dad's old transistor radio. It was longer than the antenna on the ham, so she swapped them. Still, all she heard was static. I don't understand why it's not working. Can we add something to it, like a paperclip? Oh, I don't know about a paperclip. But I think I saw somewhere that people use aluminum foil. I'll go get it, said Nina. Nina ran down to the kitchen and grabbed a roll of aluminum foil. She brought it back upstairs. They ripped a piece off and attached it to the antenna. After a few hours of tinkering, it was time for dinner. I can't believe the signal is still so weak, said Ada. Maybe the buildings are blocking it. Maybe we should try a Ouija board, said Nina. Like I said, I think we have to start with somewhere in our own realm first, said Ada. Anyway, I don't have a Ouija board. I think the antenna needs to be higher up. Like on the roof, said Nina. Exactly. Ada asked for Mr. Lace's help. Her parents had set some pretty firm rules about Ada climbing things after she'd broken her ankle over the summer. Mr. Lace went through the attic window and attached Ada's ham radio to the roof, just above Ada's window. Even with the extra height, though, Ada and Nina heard mostly static. Ada and Nina tried for the rest of the night to contact someone, but they had no luck. Bedtime, bedtime, said George. It's not a school night, George, said Ada. I can go to bed a little later tonight. Ada, called Mrs. Lace, it's time for bed. Ada looked at the clock. It was 10. Wow, said Ada, you were right, George. Ada was about to turn off the radio, then stopped. Maybe we should keep it on, you know, in case it starts working, said Ada. You know, you're right. It could be a morning for them in the middle of the night, said Nina. For whom, asked Ada. The beings from the other world. Hmm, I wonder who they are. So chapter two of Ada Lace, Take Me to Your Leader, called Strange Encounters. Nina woke Ada in the middle of the night. She was frantic. Ada, they're trying to talk to us, she whispered loudly. What? Who? I don't know, but someone or something. Kilo Delta. Oh, George woke up too. The little light Ada had installed on the top of his head glowed. Everything will be all right, said George. He started playing Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. It was a song that Ada's mom used to sing to her when she was very small. See, said Ada, listen to George. He knows what he's talking about. You don't understand. I heard something. It sounded alien, like high-pitched beeps and pops, probably alien speech. There are some funny noises on hams, I think. You were probably still dreaming, and that made it sound extra strange. George, play Nina a lullaby, said Ada. A simple version of Brahms' lullaby played over George's speakers. Does that make you feel better, asked Ada. No, it was not a dream, said Nina. I know what a dream is like. Okay, but remember Oakham's razor, asked Ada. The right answer is usually the simplest one, said Nina, I guess. Well, whatever you heard, the radio was quiet now, said Ada. I almost wish you did hear something. No, you don't, said Nina. She sounded really spooked. Ada had never seen her like that before. She usually seemed pretty excited by her kooky ideas. Okay, said Ada, getting out of bed. Let's see if we can contact anyone. Ada walked over to the radio and turned up the volume a bit. There was just the hissing of static. She pressed the button for Mike. Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo. Anyone up for a chat? No one responded. This is Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo. Hello, is someone up? Ada spoke a few more times, but didn't reach anyone. She searched through different frequencies, but heard no weird sounds. 
I'm sorry I woke you up, said Nina. It's okay, said Ada. That book has probably gotten into your head. Ada woke the next morning to find her friend already awake. Nina had her back pressed against the far wall. She had wrapped herself in her sleeping bag and was staring suspiciously at the radio across the room. Nina, what's up? Ada asked. Are the creatures from beyond calling again? They said, Nina paused. She swallowed. They said, release the swarm. They're coming for us, Ada. Oh, Nina, I think you need some sleep. I heard it, cried Nina. It was faint, but I know what I heard. Ada went to the radio. She realized she had left it on scan. She tried again to call other operators and heard a few faint ghostly voices, but it was mostly just static. Nina, said Ada. I'm not crazy, Ada. I know you're not, said Ada. But she was beginning to worry about her friend. That morning, Mr. Lace made his famous pancakes. Nina barely touched them. In fact, she nearly fell asleep at the table. You girls weren't up talking on the radio all night, were you? Asked Mr. Miss Lace. You look a little sleepy, Nina. Nina had some bad dreams, said Ada. Let's hope they were just dreams, said Nina. Then she went home to take a nap. Ada went back up to her room to try to get the radio working. After trying a bunch of different positions for the antenna, she gave up. Perhaps Mr. Peebles would know what to do. She headed over to his stoop to find out. He was throwing a ball for his little dog, Alan. I've checked all the wiring, extended the antenna, and even moved it to the rooftop to get a better signal, Ada told Mr. Peebles, but I just can't connect with anyone. George set the sprinkler off yesterday morning. Do you think that did it? Was the radio open when it happened? Did the wires or any of the connections get wet? No, I threw my raincoat over it pretty quickly, and I made sure to wipe it down afterwards, but there wasn't much to wipe off. Huh, said Mr. Peebles. Well, you said you heard some things. What kind of things are you hearing? Faint voices, mostly. Nina thinks she heard something, said Ada, but it's a little far-fetched. What did she hear? asked Mr. Peebles. She thinks she heard aliens, said Ada. Ada no noticed Milton Edison lurking by the fountain with his remote control car. Milton didn't seem to be listening, but who knew with him? He couldn't be trusted. You know Milton has a ham radio, Mr. Peebles said. He must have seen her noticing Milton. Perhaps you two could try communicating with each other. Uh, yeah, maybe. Not a chance, Ada thought to herself. Milton was a sneak and a cheater. Why did he have to do everything that she did? So what do you think I should do, Mr. Peebles? Ada asked. It's been a while since I used my old Heath kit, Ham, he said, but the city is pretty hilly. Maybe the signal is being blocked by some high terrain. We may just need to boost it a bit. I have some ideas. Let me do research and grab some equipment. Meet me back here in an hour and we can work on it together. Okay, said Ada. She was afraid to get her hopes up. She wasn't asking for much. She just wanted to be able to use her new license and talk to a few people in the area. Why was that so hard? <clears throat> Chapter three of Ada Lace, Take Me to Your Leader. The World of Hams. In an hour, Mr. Peebles returned back with a black plastic briefcase. What is that? asked Ada. It doesn't have anything to do with aliens, does it? Because I had to f my fill of those last night. No aliens, I promise, said Mr. Peebles. This, my young friend, is a radio repeater. I can get a good signal out of my back window, but I'd have to have one of those hoisted in a tree out back in order to communicate with people outside our little neighborhood. What's it do? This little contraption will take your signal and retransmit it so that you can connect with people over a broader area. You see, your signal is probably having trouble making it over these high trees we have in Juniper Garden. Wow, what's in there? Mr. Peoples opened the box. He showed Ada two handheld radios connected by wires to a little white box with a switch on it. This radio receives the signal, said Mr. Peoples, pointing to one radio. It transmits it to this little white box. The white box then relays it to the radio over here. He tapped the second radio. The signal comes out of the transmitting radio twice as strong. In theory, said Ada, she still didn't want to get her hopes up. Well, shall we give it a try, asked Mr. Peebles. Absolutely, said Ada. Ada got permission from her father to put the repeater in a tall tree not too far from Ada's window. Now the trees that were blocking the signal would actually help her get a better one. Mr. Lace went through the window and tossed the rope over a high branch and looped it around once. Then Mr. Peebles and Ada hoisted the repeater up into the tree using the rope. Then they tied the end of the rope to a lower branch to secure it. Once the repeater was set up, Ada went to her room and Mr. Peebles went back to his lab to fire up his old Heathkit ham. 
This is Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo. Mr. Peebles, are you there? Over. Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo. This is Kilo Zulu 6 Delta. Ada, I can hear you loud and clear. Over. Great. Nice weather we're having. Over. The Bay Area's finest fog. Nothing beats it. Now you can try connecting to other hams, Ada. Over. The repeater worked like a charm. Now she could hear all kinds of people having all kinds of conversations. Even with all the electronics she had, even with her very own security robot, Ada couldn't help but be amazed by her radio. People had been using this technology to talk over land and sea for more than 100 years, and there were no wires involved, just radio waves. This is as close to magic as a person gets, Ada thought. Nada just had to, Ada, Nina just had to love it, like she did. She just had to get her friend to see how amazing her new machine was. In the meantime, though, Ada had to move past listening and talking. At first, Ada felt shy about starting conversations, but the people she heard seemed so nice. After all, what else was a radio for but to communicate? First, she talked to a boy from Oakland who had all kinds of questions about George and how to make his own robot. Then she spoke to a girl from Marin who was trying to start an engineering club and wanted to know if Ada would join. She had just connected with a rocket scientist in Almeida when Mr. Lace popped in. You got your radio working, he said. Well, it was mostly Mr. Peebles, said Ada. Who were you talking to? Ada told her dad about the boy in Oakland and the girl in Marin. Now I'm talking to a rocket scientist. She's about to launch a weather balloon. Amazing. Mr. Lace listened in with Ada for a little bit and then went back to his office to finish up his lesson plan. After Mr. Lace left, Ada connected with somebody, someone else in her neighborhood who had just gotten his own license. Kilo Delta 8 Papa Kilo Romeo. This is Kilo Delta 86 Echo. It's a beautiful foggy day here in the Bay Area, over. It is indeed. Perfect kite flying weather, eh? Over. If only. I just got a new kite. I was going to attach my GoPro to it today. They talked about kites and cameras for a while. Ada knew he must be really close from the strength of the signal. She was going to see if he wanted to get together the next windy day in Juniper Garden, or maybe Golden Gate Park, but he signed off before she could get his name. Ada knew this was just the beginning. Today, she'd just talked with people in her area, but with an upgrade in equipment and more advanced license, she could talk to people from all over the world. In the meantime, she suddenly felt like she had a whole new community. The next day, after begging and pleading and agreeing to go see the newest Wizard Warriors movie with her, Ada convinced Nina to come over and try the radio again. It was clear Nina was still nervous, but Ada thought since her friend was better rested, she might be able to see the radio through fresh eyes and really appreciate the world it opened up. She was excited to show Nina how well the radio was working. She thought for sure that now she would understand how silly her fears were. Mr. Peebles knew just how to fix my radio, of course, said Ada, so now I can talk to people from all over the Bay Area. But just people, right, said Nina, looking wary. Not green bug people or clouds of pure energy. I mean, you haven't heard from whatever called the other night. They all sounded pretty normal, said Ada. What you heard must have been a fluke. Or it could have just been a dream. Sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night, I hear weird things too. She didn't mention that she never thought she heard aliens. But it didn't seem like a dream. I was dreaming about something completely different before I woke up. Well, even still, there's probably a good explanation, said Ada, switching on the power to her repeater. And I haven't heard anything weird since, so I think we're safe. Ada and Nina settled down at Ada's desk. Nina was given the seat of honor in front of the mic. Ada flicked the radio on. Then she realized her headphones were missing. Ugh, Elliot, do you have my headphones again? She yelled. Mr. Pickles and I were playing fighter pilot, he called back. Ada ran out of the room to fetch the headphones from her brother and his stuffed pig. In the hallway, she heard the thrilling crackle of her ham. Someone was about to say something. Who could it be? But when she got back into the bedroom, Nina did not look so thrilled. Ooh, what do you think happened? I gotta go, said Nina. She was clearly freaked out. What? But we haven't even tried it out yet. That thing has a whole life of its own, Ada, said Nina. You think you control it, but you don't. It just said, take me to your leader. You want to know what who, who'd say that? I'll tell you who. It's aliens. Nina ran from the room, down the stairs, across the garden, and home. Ada listened for an hour to find the aliens Nita heard, but with no luck. She stopped to do homework and have dinner, then hopped on the ham radio before bed. She heard about a poor man whose car battery died on the side of 480. His phone was also dead. Thankfully, he had a ham radio, and so did his mechanic. 
Then she heard a bunch of bird watchers talking about what they had spotted in Golden Gate Park that morning. They saw a western western tent. They saw a western tanager, two Al two Allen's hummingbirds, and a Nuttles woodpecker. Then she heard about a rare humpback whale sighting in San Francisco Bay. Nina was so worried about creatures from other worlds that she was missing all these voices sharing exciting and interesting moments in their lives. The weather had been clear and windy, good for sailing and soccer games, and also good for kite flying. She was eager to reach Kilo Delta 86 Echo, the boy with the kite she'd talked to before. She wondered if he'd had any luck today. Kilo Delta 86 Echo, are you there over? Kilo Delta 86 Echo, this is Kilo Delta 8 Papa Kilo Romeo. How are you making out with that kite, over? Kilo Delta 8 Papa Kilo Romeo, this is Kilo Delta 86 Echo. The kite flying was epic. So good. And I got the GoPro on there too. Picture's a little shaky though. Did you get out today, over? Nah, I was trying to reassure my friend that aliens weren't invading Earth. It didn't work. I don't know. Something she heard really freaked her out. Hey, what's your name anyway, over? Ha, uh, my mom says I'm not supposed to say. Sorry, gotta run. Dinner, over and out. Ada looked at the clock. It was nine o'clock. Who ate dinner at nine o'clock on a school night? Time for bed. Time for bed, said George. He rolled around in front of Ada's bed as if showing her where she was supposed to be by now. When you're right, you're right, George, said Ada. Well, thank you for joining me for Story Time from Space. That was the first three chapters of Ada Lace, Take Me to Your Leader, and I'm so excited to read the other chapters with you soon.